Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Invos monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. The contents and conclusions of the following programs are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. For this segment of the series, a discussion on the utility of the INVO system. How does the INVO's monitor overcome the challenge of localizing the measurement of oxygen saturation? To help answer this question is Eli Coleman, Senior Research Manager at Medtronic. This section will take a closer look at how INVOS overcomes the challenge of localizing the measurement of oxygen saturation at the organ tissue of interest. First, let's examine what the path of light may look like for a reflectance-based measurement from a light source to a detector that we'll call the shallow detector in a scattering medium that has some superficial thickness denoted T in the figure on the left. The blue line describes the light path from the emitter that travels a certain distance below the surface in that banana-shaped path. We can represent this path linearly for demonstration purposes. Let's walk through the journey of this light path. So first, the light passes through the superficial tissue uh, or superficial layer in an arc length of L1. The superficial layer has a specific scattering and absorption coefficient that contributes to light loss. The brown color in the center figure represents the optical properties of this layer. The light then reaches a maximum depth before returning to that same superficial layer on its way to the shallow detector. We denote the arc length of this deeper region as LS. This deeper region has a different scattering and absorption properties in the top layer, and so is represented by a gray color here. The final leg back through the superficial layer travels length L2. Again, loss of light here is affected by the same absorption and scattering characteristics of the superficial layer. We can also plot what we might measure from the detector, which is the change in light intensity traveling through that tissue. Let's do the same thing with another light path, one that travels to a further detector. As physics tells us, since this detector is further away, light will penetrate more deeply and overall the distance through the cerebral tissue or whatever medium is below the superficial layer will be longer. We can plot its change of light uh, as well. It experiences greater light loss due to the longer path length. What's important to note is that one, since the light source is chosen as a single point, we have one LED package for two wavelengths, the distance L1 is the same for either deep or shallow paths. Two, the path length for the more distant detector will travel deeper through the tissue based on scattering. And three, if deep and shallow detectors have close enough spacing to each other, the distance L2 is equivalent. So if we were to overlay these boxes, we'd see that they only differ in that the further detector samples more of the deeper tissue represented by this blue box. In other words, INVOS takes the signal measured from the further detector, the deep detector, and subtracts out the signal from the shallow detector to be left with a signal that's influenced only by the tissue of interest without any contamination from the superficial tissue. So putting this all together, we have some key takeaways. First, the relative change of absorption between two wavelengths correlates to the percent concentration of a mixture. Next, the relative difference between two detector signals at two locations isolates a tissue of interest, which means that reliable regional oxygen saturation measurements depend on knowing the initial intensity of light sources, knowing uh, and measuring change of intensity due to wavelengths, isolating the difference in attenuation between two detector spacings, and finally ensuring the models are val valid. If we can't confirm we've isolated the tissue of interest, then all other measurements, no matter how high quality and clean, don't tell us what we want to know. So next we'll step through how INVOS has ensured that the tissue of interest is isolated through proper sensor design. 
please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcast. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.